Hello, welcome to Outside Xbox. You're watching Show of the Week. I'm Mike. And I'm Andy. This week I went clay pigeon shooting on the new buggy vehicle in Dying Light the following. It's like laying okay, an egg. And, yeah, dry, lay one now. Lay an egg. Okay, right. now stop. Lay mine. Yes. Nice. And Cheer. pull. <laughs> Amazing. Clay zombie shooting, whatever. And how was Dying Light the following? It's a little buggy. Oh, if you're heading to the props room, can you take this with you? I borrowed Jane's pen and she said to return it or there'd be consequences. I can't, I'm already carrying six items. I've got my phone, wallet, keys and three sticks of gum. We'll just leave one of them here and collect it later. <laughs> I wish. I'd have to find an oversized chest to store them in. I think I saw one at the far end of the studio through the long gallery and the trap room full of suits of armour. This is ridiculous. So ridiculous, in fact, that one of the standout features of Resident Evil Zero HD is how you can now drop items on the floor to make inventory space, then come back later and pick them up, like a normal human being. Sorry if I sound pathetically excited about this, but if you've ever made a 20 minute round trip to an item box just so you can pick up a small plastic keycard, you'll know where I'm coming from. If you missed Resident Evil Zero the first time around, and chances are you did because it only came out on Nintendo's ill-fated GameCube console, you need to know it's a prequel to the original Resident Evil. It shows you how the T-Virus spread, what Wesker and Birkin were up to, and what happened to Bravo Team. You know, the guys whose corpses you spend the first hour of the original game tripping over. You start out playing as 18-year-old Stars rookie Rebecca Chambers. That's Officer Chambers to you. Sorry, Officer Chambers. Soon enough, however, Resi Zero adds a partner character, escaped convict and professional bad boy Billy Cohen, who may or may not be a mass murderer. Did you kill 23 people? I'm not going to judge you. I mean, maybe you should, Rebecca? That seems like the kind of criteria on which you could definitely judge people. Anyway, you can switch to Billy at any time in a feature that was known at the time as partner zapping because it was the early 2000s. Back then, people probably also thought Billy Cohen's tattoos were cool. Been fantasizing about me, have you? Besides the extra dimension, having a partner adds to some puzzles and the welcome extra inventory space of a second character, this is still Resident Evil business as usual with all the gross bosses, tank-like controls, and incomprehensible plot that that entails. Now I will have my revenge on Umbrella. And the world will burn in an inferno of hate. <laughs> oh, and the obligatory Resident Evil spooky mansion. You begin the game on a train, so it's like they tried to do something different at first, then they made the train look like a mansion, then finally they gave up and put you in an actual mansion. God bless them for trying though. If you can get over the antique game design, there's spooky fun aplenty, just don't get too attached to any of Bravo Team, yeah? The, the forest is full of zombies and monsters. Zombies and monsters? Apparently this game's set before Resident Evil 1 and shed some light on what happened in it. So I'm not getting my pen back. I wonder if there are any other games that do that. Because I've got some stuff that needs signing. Hey, it turns out there are. Normally the formula goes release successful game, collect money, use money to make sequel. Every so often though, developers like to shake it up and tell you what happened before your favourite games in what we in the biz like to call a prequel. The very best prequels reveal new details about the events and characters from the original storyline and hopefully don't retrospectively tarnish your love of the games that they're based on. Unlike the prequels to a certain movie series that we made a cast iron New Year's resolution not to moan about. Here are five prequels that shed new light on the original games. I am Alexander Leonovich Granin. A man of some importance if I do say so myself. Winding the clock back to 1974, the third Metal Gear Solid game famously gives you insight into Solid Snake's genetic heritage, but it also reveals the background to something that is a crucial part of every game in the series. We get to meet the original creator of the Metal Gear bipedal tanks that gave the series its name. He's Alexander Leonovich Granin and he is a grumpy Russian vodka enthusiast. You're crocked, aren't you? Unfortunately for all his towering intellect, he's not so great at explaining the concept, which he describes as a sort of gear that's metal? A kind of metal gear, if you will. Metal gear. <laughs> Man, he is drunk. He's also extremely proud of these designs for the Russian Metal Gear project, which is why when it's cancelled, he sends them to Otacon's father, Huey Emmerich, to spite his former paymasters. The rest, as they say, is MGS history. I'm going to send these documents to my friend in the United States. Shame not all of the designs include a provision to stop your bottom hanging out of the back. Was he also drunk when he designed the walker gear? <laughs> 
Borderlands the pre-sequel does exactly what it says on the Steelbook, acting as a prequel to the sequel to Borderlands. But rather than playing as the mostly honourable vault hunters that you know and love, you play as a band of bad guys who appeared as antagonists and occasionally got shot to pieces in the previous games. What's special about the pre-sequel is that it not only filled in the details of Handsome Jack's rise to power, but also gave you a bit of sympathy for the bad guys who ranged from optional irritations, Nisha, to major pains in the bum, Wilhelm, in Borderlands 2. Oh dear. It's a trap! Still no sympathy for Handsome Jack, that guy is, and always has been, a turbo jerk. Woo! Ah, damn! You're the best, Handsome Jack! And super handsome, did I mention that? And smart, and all the women want to do ya. You like my poem? I wrote that. Oh, this can't be happening. There's no mistake. It's them. Winter contingency has been declared. All units are mobilized and ready. This is Sierra 360, for combat inception. What the hell was that? In Halo lore, and believe me, there is a lot of Halo lore, there are few events as significant as the fall of Reach. It's the reason why Master Chief ended up all on his lonesome as the last remaining Spartan in the original Halo, and it's also the reason why everyone else in Halo 3 co-op had to play as Covenant Elites instead of guys with cool helmets. Chief, wait! The Arbiter's with us! Come on now. We've got enough to worry about without you two trying to kill each other. Yes, I'm still bitter about being Anonymous Covenant number two. All right, there had been a tie-in novel called Fall of Reach way back when, but we'd never actually seen how the Spartans' valiant last stand looked in all its glory until Bungie's last Halo game, the prequel, Halo Reach. As it happened, it looked a bit like an impossible to complete end of credits sequence where you get shot to bits and your visor cracks. The cool armor abilities and a range of colorful customized Mjolnir variants introduced in the game were lost to the mists of time, presumably. Good job we like the color green, eh, Chief? What's your status, son? Green, sir. He's not wrong. Remember, there's a hierarchy here, capiche? Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories was a PSP and later PS2 prequel to the all-conquering GTA 3. It fleshes out some of the story behind the Leone Mafia family who you toppled over the course of the original game. What's strange is that Liberty City Stories version of the city streets are populated with motorbikes, whereas GTA 3's version only had cars. According to the game's website, it's because of a public ordinance that banned motorbikes from the streets of Liberty City at the turn of the 21st century. The law was backed by car manufacturer lobbyists, the Maibatsu Corporation, in the hopes of shifting more of their Maibatsu monstrosity SUVs. So that's why you don't see bikes in GTA 3, and definitely not because Rockstar only introduced them to the series in Grand Theft Auto Vice City then. Got it? So you want to be in Soldier? Hang in there. One piece of advice. No. In order. With one of the most beloved worlds and storylines in video gaming history, even after three discs and tens of hours, people were still desperate for more Final Fantasy VII. I mean, just look at the reaction to the announcement of the remake, which is basically the same game, but prettier. <laughs> A little bit of excitement. PSP prequel Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core shows in more detail the events that led to Cloud's amnesia and confusion over his own identity, one of the central mysteries in the original game, and the epilogue runs right into the opening scenes of the 1997 PS1 classic, at which point everyone becomes tiny people with oversized hands and feet, I guess. But the very best bit about playing Crisis Core, you know Eris absolutely can't die in this game. Now it's time to see what's written in the comments and in the lab notes of Umbrella Scientists. Two hours after infection, subject turned into a gross tentacle monster and killed all lab staff. Experiment to success, recommend buying five more mansions. That is a solid business model right there. First up this week, your comments on this video about the video game hotels most deserving of an angry TripAdvisor review. When it's time to take a few days off and get away from it all, is it too much to ask to check into a clean, comfortable, unhaunted hotel that isn't run by murderous fish people? And don't get me started on the breakfast buffet, huh? As ever, some good suggestions from the Ox Boxer sizes, such as this from commenter Agent Washington. Bison Steve Hotel in Fallout New Vegas. These trigger-happy criminals had taken over the place, most of the rooms were full of rubble, and that roller coaster out back didn't work. No stars. I can get over most of that, but the roller coaster. It's heartbreaking. 
Regular commenter Ray Ayanami 8 meanwhile thinks that those places were a bust, but at least you'll always have your memories of the Clown Inn from Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Oh yeah, the constant gun battles around the pool were a negative, but the clown sign that fired rainbow bombs out of its head was a nice touch. <laughs> And RMGB TV thinks that Innsmouth may be full of angry fish men, but there's no need to carp on about it. Go on. What? Make more fish puns. I wouldn't dream of it. Seriously. It's neither the time nor the place. With an eye. Moving on, here are the comments on Andy and Mike playing Assassin's Creed Chronicles India. The thing about these games is like, you know this guy has his own like series of tie-in novels. Oh yeah, almost certainly. Probably hordes of cosplayers yeah. dressed up as him. It's a sexy fan fiction. Ollie Fenton is here to upload the law, he says. You know Arbaz is Henry's father from Syndicate? Get the book. I, no, no, I won't be doing that. Well, Death Slide 8 says, not allowed to kill anyone. Do they know what an assassin is? Yes, actually they do. An assassin acquires a target and kills their target, not go on a mass murdering rampage to get to their target. What, since when? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that must be part of the creed somewhere. And regarding our general level of game skill, Via Neo 1987 says, Well, you are not the worst players ever. Oh, that's nice. You are just slightly below average, which is a lot more infuriating. Oh. I feel like, you know, from now on, we're going to be brilliant at all games. Is this the New Year's this resolution? This is New Year's resolution to be the best at all games. Okay, cool. So I think it's going all right so far. We've, yeah. We're currently the best at, whoa, sorry, I meant to jump. All right. Last up, your comments on last week's show about Gone Home and the other walking simulators we would like to play on Xbox One. Your ability to walk is paired with your ability to open drawers and examine objects in your role as a domestic detective. Also, you can make a right mess by dropping stuff all over the place. Yeah, that'll teach you not to pick me up at the airport, Mum. Mackenzie Lambert's here with a suggestion, saying, The only walking simulator I've enjoyed was Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Cop-out ending, but a mystery that borders on Lovecraftian horror. So, fish people. Very possibly. Commenter Simple Exploding Maybe has issues with the name Walking Simulator and has their own suggestion. How about Walkie Talkies instead? Although most of the talkie is in your heady, so walkie thinky in a monologue simulators? How about stroll playing games? Hike and slash? Side stroller? Beat em up. Nailed it. Finally, the fourth Reaper says, I'd want to make a game called The Oxbox Parable, where at random times you hear arguments over who gets to narrate, when to press the like button, and who they should listen to. It was at this point that Mike decided to go and get Jane her pen from the studio. Yeah, but you don't have to do what Mike we... decided to leave straight away, not hanging around for any reason because of the terrible things that would happen if he didn't. All right. Cheers. No problem. That's it for this week's show, but here's a fun science experiment you can perform at home. Take some baking soda, vinegar, food colouring and ordinary dish soap, throw them all away and then press the like button. If you did it right, the like button will turn blue. Thanks for watching. See you next time. All right, lunch? Oh, I can't. I've got to go take Jane her pen back. She's getting really scary. Well, at least you can carry it now. Yeah, I'm glad Resident Evil saw sense with that one. Although, if you want to get back in the props room, you will need the key that's locked inside this ornate gothic music box. Well, yeah, obviously.